This postcard says, I like smooth men. Hey. This is from Chris from Vegas. Happy 2022. I was wondering how you keep track of all the cast members to each movie for The Basement. Have Do you use a spreadsheet? I wonder the same thing because a lot of times when he's like, uh, this movie includes Basement alums, this, 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 and I'm like, what was this guy in? Well, Chris, I use a little database known as the human mind. And this spooky rabbit postcard is one we've seen before. This is from Tim and Laurie in Providence, Rhode Island. You clearly own many movies on DVD as well as music on CD and vinyl. Do you own any CDs or LPs of music by people primarily known as actors or actresses in movies? <laughs> First actors and then... I own no music by Russell Crowe. No, I own no music. Or by Kevin Bacon. Yeah, Bruce Willis. I've got that. 45 by Michael Shannon's band. Well, I think the answer is turning out to be no. Yeah. When you go to welcometothebasementshow.com, you can see all of our episodes there, and there are also PayPal donation buttons that you can click on to make a donation to support our show, a one-time or rolling monthly donation. I will now read off a list of some of our rolling monthly donors. Shelby, RPC Services, Katrine, Reed, Jed, Guy, Jeff, Anthony, Brett, Peter, Stephanie, Ryan, Marissa, Kieran, Catherine, Lindsay, Chris, and Laura. The rest of our donors later in the show. And now, viewer questions. Anna Heff. Matt going out drinking with Starburns? What I would give to have been along for the ride that night. <laughs> going out drinking with Starburns is not quite how I would put it. Uh, I was going out drinking with Dan Harmon. Starburns showed up later, and this was pre-Starburns when he was just Dino. Nice guy, friendly guy. He's a very quiet man. He's the kind of guy who will just sit there in silence for most of the night, and then every once in a while I'll throw out the little, the little zinger that just, you know, shows how kind of brilliant he is. But a lot of people showed up on that night. I think Jerry Miner, who's a comedian you might know, Jay Johnston, pre-Capital Riot Jay Johnston, yeah. back when he was just a cool comedian. Mm -hmm. He was there. The, the herky-jerky man, yeah. It was a good night at the Roost in L.A. I wasn't invited. Simo Autio writes, Has the pandemic affected your professional lives or careers? Yes, I, I would say that. I have always seen myself as a performer. I was an actor for over 20 years. I have been a tour guide, uh, which I also see as a form of performance, and I do improv comedy. I have not done any of that in over two years, and that is how I define myself. And now I define myself as a guy who has my job. It's not a day job if it's your only job. This is from Tim Lemire. This is from Dutchman Dave, I believe, uh, in Eckville, Alberta. Hope you enjoy the movie. Powder! Oh, yeah. Yeah, powder. I've never seen that. I have never seen it. We've got a Rhode Island postcard, 3% bigger at low tide. Oh. Our respective home states, Wisconsin and Rhode Island, have something in common. Wisconsin state drink is milk, and Rhode Island state drink is coffee milk. That is milk flavored with coffee syrup. When Laura and I were in school, coffee milk was always an option in the cafeteria, along with whole milk and chocolate milk. Now this great taste of Rhode Island is yours with the enclosed. Simply mix two to three tablespoons of autocrat coffee syrup autocrat, into <laughs> a glass of milk as you would with chocolate syrup. It might be good, it might be bad, but we hope you and Craig enjoy and for Craig's collection, a Rhode Island postcard. Rhode Island and Wisconsin have something else in common. We're the only two places in America that commonly call drinking fountains bubblers. Secondly, autocrat? They named this autocrat? Have they never heard of what an autocrat is? Coffee milk. Never heard of such a thing. No, I haven't. You have a dog. I have no dog. Then how do you account for these marks? Uh, I have been trying to quit smoking. I'll ring for the chambermaid. Perhaps she can explain. No, the snakes! There you go. Now, why should anyone want to take an old boot? Holmes. And then exchange a brand new one. When he give me the two guineas, what he'd promised me. I put them guineas in a cage what? and presented them to, to me, my family. Sure. They were delighted as the guineas scurried around, <laughs> ran on little wheel, 
take this brooch, my dear, and wear it on your wedding dress. It will make you fertile. You will have many babies because of the brooch. <laughs> just shoot, Watson. Just anytime you hear a noise, just pull out that pistol and fire away. We were hoping, Mr. Holmes, that you may be able to shed some light on the occurrences that have puzzled us down here. Mr. Holmes, will you uh, appear on my podcast? Ah! Oh, I thought it was really coming at us. It gets me every single time. <laughs> every single time. Ever since 1892. Often in our P.O. box, we receive records, and I make an effort to listen to them, and I've got one that I listen to here. I listen to two sides of it. There are five of them. This is Coheed and Cambria, the title of which is hidden. The title. Wait, wait. I'm almost there. Oh my <laughs> good lord, look at that. The title ah. is called The Unheavenly Creatures. I don't know if you can see this. This is side six. It's got an etching on it. There's no music there. Unheavenly Creatures, it's etched. Yeah. This is a very... I wish bands would do this more often. Because everybody's releasing double albums these days, but you don't always have four sides of music. It's okay to just have a three-sided album and have the fourth side, something like this on there. Yeah. That's what Cambria did, as well as Coheed. This is a sci-fi epic story of some sort. There are pictures here. I don't know if this is an actual movie soundtrack. Like if there's a movie with this scary fella... But yeah. also, yeah, look at that vinyl. Let's see. I, I hope I'm folding it right. Beautiful. Unheavenly creatures. Right. They're off in space there. How's the music? The music is not what I expected. I didn't know what they were supposed to sound like. It really sounds like your basic sort of hard rock. Like, this could have come out in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I had someone to compare them to before, but... Do you know that dragon song? Dragon... The Dragon Band. They sing their... Something Dragons. They do their really fast... Imagine Dragons. No, no, not Imagine Dragons. No, it's Dragon... <clears throat> like Dragon Spirit or something. Okay. They do a really fast song. It's like a really... <laughs> I don't remember they what they They do the called. fast song. The fast dragon <laughs> song. <laughs> they're called Dragon Spirit or... Dra I don't know. Anyway... Just, just this kind of operatic hard rock. They're, these guys are not afraid to go full Tenacious D. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. But not in a funny way. Other donors include Beth, Melanie, Greg, Adam, Emily, Mitchell, Ralph, Caitlin, Ella, Kai, Mike, Kempson, Benjamin, Bernard, J.P., Alfred, and Dave. We got two more packages. All right. Second City Prince, Batavia, Illinois. Aaron in Helsinki Kitchen. Well, Second City Prince also sells music. I am working on a complete discography of this band. The world is a beautiful place and I'm no longer afraid to die. This is Formlessness, which I think goes along with their other album, Harmlessness. Looks like an old uh, abandoned convenience store right there. It's a great cover. What's more rock and roll than that? And of course, there's artwork that comes with Aaron. We have, what is that? Snow on a beautiful street and a bat saying, where am I? Of course the bat's confused. They hibernate in the winter. Oh, come on now. <laughs> I, just, I just got rid of these. <laughs> and now I have a whole, a whole other box. Tone of this camera just shut off. He uses them as packing peanuts. But what is he packing? Three envelopes. <laughs> okay. Something for you. All right. Something for me, and something else for me labeled private, which you guys don't get to find out about. Craig, I have taken out a contract on Matt Sloan's life. Don't <laughs> tell him. I want to inherit his ancestral estate. I couldn't be more thrilled that you organically came up with the idea to secretly leave cranes around the Madison area to cheer people's day. I have been doing this around the Pittsburgh and Hell's Kitchen area for years. I have gotten mostly positive reactions. I did once, though, have someone <coughs> yell at me, Hey, buddy, what the hell's the deal with all these penguins? <laughs> 
Please enjoy this second box full of prints. Thank you, Aaron. This, these are... I like the blue. I'm going to keep this one. Sorry, Matt. This one's for me. Sorry, Matt. You're going to have to leave the house again to dump off all these. Again? And he sends me a bunch of postcards. Happy New Year. It was just Chinese New Year, so this is timely. Wishing you a Happy New Year 1908. That is a vintage postcard if I ever saw one. And this is 1907. And this just says, uh, ring in the glad new year. What does the private one say? It's private. I mean, what's it about? I haven't looked at it yet. You didn't no, let me open it. Don't you know what it's about? No. Are you going to tell me? I don't know. It's private. What would he tell you that he wouldn't want to tell me? It's not private. It's just something that, that's private about me. He's done some investigating on me. Oh. Craig, feel free to read this or a summarized version of it. There's personal info here. He wanted to make certain about me. He wanted to make certain that I was okay with it. My mother has had a timeshare in Nantucket for years, and every time Pam and I go there, we visit Mitchell's Book Corner and the Nantucket Bookworks. The last time we were there, we were in the Nantucket Bookworks, and I overheard one of the women... Uh, working there, say, oh, I've worked here for 25 years. So I said, excuse me, I have a friend who had a mail correspondence with someone who worked here. She said, was he from Michigan? I said, well, close, Wisconsin. She said, was his name John? I said, close again, Craig Johnson. She said, the woman you were corresponding with moved to New Zealand a few years back. So yeah, that's it. I didn't see any old postcards hanging up, but I want you to know that you are remembered fondly on the island of Nanta. And I remember... The island of Nantucket fondly because of the good people at Nantucket Bookworks. And someday, someday you'll go back. Mm -hmm. and that woman from New Zealand will have returned. Yeah. This has been an episode of Unboxing to Remember. I got a bunch more little friends here. There he is. Or she. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this and uh, we would like you to go out side and I don't I don't care what you do just do something yeah live your lives live them well